Hey, it's uh, it's about 11.24 p.m. I'm going to do some serious talking. All right? Seriously. Now, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to talk about, that's that, that might cost me, that might boost me, but nevertheless, like I do everything, I'm going to tell you how I feel right from the heart. But this, what I'm about to show you, his words and I'm gonna read them but uh it points out something and it made me think of um a few other things uh hopefully I can keep this under 10 minutes I doubt it but I'm gonna try so this if you look at your screen now this comes from the YouTube uh creator named light skin love now while I read all this I'm only going to focus on one small thing but what it says is, welcome to heterosis gnosis. I share my views. A person described as a light-skinned, realist, atheist, humanist. Multiracial people are the biggest population in America under 18. We deserve to be in charge of black America, culturally and economically. Traditional black people have had long enough. From Malcolm X to Colin Kaepernick, we have been the only element among the American Negro population working to honestly guided to the right direction blacks have downplayed our contributions out of a petty grudge and that has caused them to choose leaders that have devastated us both we must become unapologetically light-skinned and demand our historical legacy be recognized and respected as well as our opinion today it is, the, it is time to confront the colorism and move to develop our own separate community away from all monoracial influence. And that's what it says. I'm going to leave it up on the screen for those that want to pause and read and whatnot. Uh, and heteros, heterosis, gnosis, those are two separate words. All right. So you can look them up like I did, you know. Uh, but what I want to focus on is uh, a few, a, a couple of things. Uh, we deserve to be in charge of black America. That line alone will let somebody know, hey, we light-skinned people ain't black. And, or, or, we're black, but we better black than you. It's something. You wouldn't want to be in charge of a whole race. Just think about that. You know, culture and economic. Now, it says here, this is what I want to hyper-focus on. Traditional black people have had long enough now I want to focus on that, and I want—I really want to focus on that, because, see, part of me agrees. Yeah, dark-skinned people have been in charge per se in uh, black communities. The darker-skinned people have basically been the, the the face of, you know, African Americans, and we have, you know, and me, I'm I'm like triple tone here, so. You know, mostly I'm dark skinned, but then I got this light chocolate part of me and then a little bit lighter than that. You know, you know, pick which side, pick, pick which color you want to hate because see, that that's racism. Just letting you know, pick, pick, pick a color. Now, here's here's what's going on now in ancient times when Africa was just all dark people, just all dark. You know, it was cool until there were albinos and they started being born in mass. When you have millions of people, you start to get hundreds of thousands of something else. It happens. It just happens. Albinism happens, you know, even it, it keeps happening. And every racial kind has it. So for for Africans, those light skinned ones became the new in thing. The darker skinned people got ignored. So what happens? The light skinned ones get pushed away. That's simply that that's how that go. That's how that went. So where was the when did who started racism? The dark skinned black people. Let's fast forward. I've done this before. That's why I'm skipping a lot. And so now let's say just going on to uh since slavery and up, the light skinned people were seen more favorably and accept it more so by the their white counterparts, which is basically their hyper albino side. So, I mean, hey, white people, you black too. 
that, that way without without us you wouldn't be here that's just it you know the human race shouldn't be black shouldn't be white light skin or anything it's just a human damn race anyway so with this going on with blacks the dark black people being angry at the lighter the lighter black people and jealous my I add because they don't get punished as harshly you know hey that that's where more jealousy kicks up and then you got the light skinned people that are light enough to pass for white and they they know the opportunities no racism segregation they don't get to see uh, uh, whites only you know they don't they don't have to worry about that and so they try they really try to pass for white you know and it worked in very few cases. It did work. So that is like, look, you betraying your kind. You know, that's it. You you betraying your people. Your kind, your people, your heritage. And that's what the darker skinned people would say. And light skinned people would be like, damn, man, I wish I was light enough to be that because I ain't dark enough to be accepted by them. So, so light skinned people are hated by black people. They're hated by white people. And they are abandoned by the black people who are light enough to pass for white. I mean, in all honesty, how are you not going to go crazy in that? In all honesty, how are you not going to, you don't fit in anywhere. And then you got to watch TV and he listen to my black brothers and sisters when you haven't been accepted. Just think about that. That's a cycle. That starts a cycle. So you get all these dark people talking about my black brothers and sisters and talking about we got to band together. We got to rise up. We got to we got to have things black owned, black made, black love spread out, spread our our genome throughout this and make America ours. We built it. It's ours, not theirs. They bought us from Africa to here. They enslaved our people and made us build this land. We own it, not them. But you light-skinned people, y'all ain't shit. We ignore you. We look over you. Now, I'm not being some damn light-skinned apologist, but you need to know the truth. All right? I don't like... I'm not in favor of light-skinned people. I ain't in favor of dark-skinned people. I ain't in favor of white people. I'm in favor of people that got some goddamn sense in them. That's what I'm in favor. I'm in favor of people that want to make a collective and do the right thing out of kindness to end suffering, to end poverty, to raise the lower class up to compete, if not dominate the middle class, taking over as the middle class and let the, the, the middle class, not little, the middle class be the new lower class for all I give a shit. Let them taste that and, and see what they've been railing against all this time. But that's what's been going on. And that's a social warfare. And so when you, so today, 94 and up, when I became very cognitive of things, because I mean, I ain't gonna lie, light skinned people have hated me for so long, and I try being nice to everybody. And and dark skin, light skin, white have hated me like crazy, and I never knew why. I've been told because I'm fat. I was told because I'm just too black. I I I I, I, I was told that I was hated just because others hated me. What the fuck? I don't know what to do. So that's where I come from. I don't have a dog in these fights. And I don't give a shit for them because they're a waste of fucking time. That's just it. And, and, and here's the thing. Light-skinned people are still trying to be accepted by white America. Black, dark-skinned people are trying to be accepted by white America. White America ain't trying to be accepted by black people. White America just get into the black fold, you know, by any way they can take our style, our gear, our words, wait about 20 or 30 years, and then decide to start using them on TV as if it's something cool. And we don't say shit about that. There's so many things I see on TV, and all I think is, you know, and this, this is like, you know, YouTube and stuff, and I see these commercials, and all I say is, you're welcome. Because that's all I got. You know, when I, when I see these cartoons and other these TV shows talking about some, you know, yeah, plays got to play and stuff, I'm like, yeah, you're welcome. You know, you, you see you see your Caucasian counterparts, you know, grabbing their crotch and stuff like that, trying to sag, trying to be, I'm like, yeah, you're welcome. You know, when you see them trying to have that street look, you're welcome. They don't want to be a part of us. They just want that part.
heart of us, there's a difference. It's the same as someone that's not guilty. They're not innocent. They're just not guilty. That's all that is. I know you know how that feel. And I, I can't help but to, to, to notice this. And I'm like, you know what? Light skin love was probably heavily damaged by the same things that damaged me. You know, light skin people couldn't stand me. I mean, they really couldn't stand me. And black, dark black people probably couldn't stand him because light skin people are seen as favored. They, they y'all get all the perks. What you coming over here for? Why don't you go on over to them people that look more like you? Saying as much dark skin, saying the much dumb, stupid shit they can. Someone trying to be a part of them and chill with them, and then they're gonna push them away. Oh, well, he light skin. He gonna get what he want. He's special. Same thing for the girls, and then they grow up crazy because nobody like them. The whites won't accept them, and they, and and if the black the black people push them away and and see them with the whites and be like, you sell out. I'll tell you a personal story. I'll tell you a personal story. This 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 happened in high school. No no black girl wanted to be with me. No Asian girl wanted to be with me, as few as there were in the school. None. Nobody wanted to be with me. Nobody liked me. I was too fat, too dark, too ugly, too unpopular. So this white girl, she liked me. As much as I guess one could. And you know what she did? She took a shine to me. And me, I was dirt damn scared of the backlash. And I didn't treat her the best. No, I didn't insult her. Hell no. I wanted to be a friend. Outside of a relationship type thing, I was her friend. We chill. But in the relationship thing, man, I was ducking and dodging. I was not the best person. I just won't. I question what if I had been sometimes I mean maybe once a year maybe every two years or three years I question you know what if I had I don't know well, I'll tell you this despite us not thoroughly being seen together I'm in class with this girl that's light skin she's more red bone actually she ain't she brown she light brown she way lighter than me but clearly darker than the average light skin person so my pencil broke I'm trying to write my pencil snapped right in the middle so what do I do I ask her can I borrow a pencil please I mean just like that can I borrow a pencil please probably sounded far more submissive than that why don't you ask her for a pencil and I'm like hmm I turn around and my thought is well if I don't get my work done teacher know I asked and you know, yeah, the girl shouted out her name. So no one asked me about the relationship or anything. But yeah, they didn't. They nobody liked her. Find out nobody nobody liked her. Why? She had huge breasts. Not a turn on for me. I didn't give a damn. But then ultimately the relationship ended. Not because of me. Not because of her. But because her family said, "Look, you keep you keep seeing this black dude, and you cut off, and you get nothing." You know, she was going to graduate, you know, that year anyway. So she had to, she had to leave me. And I was like, oh, okay, that means no more ducking and dodging, no more fear, no more none of that. But although the relationship ended, everyone thought that we were still together despite us not even really being around each other. <laughs> That's how that went. Um, so, yeah, seeing how things go, seeing how this is. And I know it's ran over 10 minutes, I know. But this is a cycle. They're going to hate us because we hate them. And we're going to hate them because they hate us. So who's to break the cycle? You remove pride. You remove shame. You remove bullshit. You know who breaks the cycle? Both sides. It ain't about what year it is. I don't give a shit that it's 2019. I don't give a shit and you shouldn't. Your shaming is stupid. All right, it really is. It shouldn't have been done in 1865, 1765, 1665. It shouldn't be done in 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 2065. That's about how that go. Your shaming is stupid. And what you need is, you know, honestly, people inclusion. Include them. 
you know now it's up to light skin love and those that think like him to just say wait a minute let me rethink how I am because in all honesty personally I know I'm not included in this this is not me I don't condone or support any of this that's on the screen I don't and I won't but what I do acknowledge is why it's there and it wouldn't be there if they were included with us all the time instead of seen as the enemy as capitalistic as black people are as capitalistic as we are we can't shame them at all for doing their best to be a part of something that might accept them people want to be accepted and since we won't doing it they went somewhere else and then we get mad when they go somewhere else I guess we just be happy if they just sat there stewing in their own misery alone why don't you light skin people be with you light skin cells why don't you do that oh, shit honestly I'm surprised they haven't tried to wipe us out already with, the, with that kind of mess going on and black people what are we going to do with each other do we, I mean we support each other like we support them that's why I said we've had long enough because what do we do do we really support each other or do, do we try to get each other to support one black person and then if we do try to support that black person does that black person have our best interest in heart you know because if you truly love your people your people come before your needs or your needs will elevate the people not higher than you but if anything equal to you and they get higher than fine you get a piece of that pie anyway you can go to your black your, your local black people go ahead I don't give a damn what shade you got an idea an entrepreneurism going on are they gonna support it if they get paid are they going to like you for even trying to elevate yourself? Of course. Oh, he's trying to do good things. I ain't down with that. I ain't even going to try to spread the word that he's doing it. I'm not even going to help recruit for him. I'm not going to look. I'm not even going to look for people that's uh, uh, like-minded like him and then guide them to it. No, he's going to find that on their own. That's what happens. So we just as gutter trash as we want to think anyone else is. And if you don't want to be gutter trash, the truth is you just got to come up out of it. Stop being stupid and do the right thing support your local black people best that you can you know you say you ain't got the money but let a storm come by all of a sudden you want to buy up all the water all the bread soda and, and shit off the shelves like I mean if someone ain't got no money you show spending a lot your tax returns come you get you do some stupid shit with it I know what to do with tax return money I know what to do and keep some change I support I will support what damn the race I'll support somebody that's going to do the right thing do the good thing do the positive thing that's what everybody should be doing I'm serious do it does it hurt does it hurt to go against what you've been hardwired to do all these generations because you got to carry the weight of, of all those dumbasses before you and while you're trying to do things that you, you might be trying to do things positive this is that thing in you that keeps stopping you you know, if you got to do a mantra, do it. Lay down, chill, listen to some alpha waves, you know, listen to them and just report. I will actually be positive. No, not will. No, I'm positive. I'm helpful. I look out for my black people of any shade. Try that. Do something because what we have done hasn't gotten us anywhere except right where we've been in the beginning. It went from the fields to the warehouses, from the warehouses to the streets hustling each other. From the streets hustling each other to the streets killing each other for that hustle, trying to out-hustle the other. From that to just dogging everyone verbally, mentally, physically, best that we can. And then when there's a, a, a situation and there's a riot, what do we do? We fuck up our own place. How dumb is that? How cowardly is that? You mad at the white people, but you're going to fuck up the black people's area. That's some stupid shit. Really think about that. Your neighbor fuck up your, your, you know, your lawn or your car or your house. So you go to the nearest black person you can and beat the shit out of them. Wow, what a point you've made. I'm just saying. Think. 
Let's end this cycle. We can do it overnight, right now, right here, right now. All tomorrow, we can end it just by changing. Stop, think, change. That's it. It ain't what you do, but why you do it. It ain't what you think, but why you think it. This is Cedric Kennedy for comparative reasoning. I do thank you for listening.